I know why I have this melancholy, sad feeling about being a leader. It's because I know that even though I'm morally trying to be a good person and make almost all the right decisions, I still see myself being worldly, uh, overly competitive, hateful of my enemies. Uh, I act stupid around the office. I, I goof off. And I'm only 36 years old. And I've tried to grow up. I've been doing this 15 years. I just realized the great responsibility I have. Like the silly Spider-Man line about with great power comes great responsibility. And I'm also very sad because all the information that comes out on a daily basis just absolutely confirms, completely validates, and vindicates our worst fears and our analysis of this new order system. And every time I look at my wife and children, every time I think about how real and serious this is, it, it doesn't even scare me. The word is it spooks me. It's, a, it's not a fear, it's a melancholy. Because there's so much good in the world, there's so much beauty, there's so much purity, but it's juxtaposed with all this corruption and people are so naive. If they would just wake up and admit that evil really exists and that evil masquerades as an angel of light, things wouldn't go this far down the road of wickedness, of true corruption, of generational evil and, 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 and organized crime and people that are cold-blooded and selfish and totally power-hungry. And there's different variants of the type of people that serve the New World Order. There's ignorant people, there's compartmentalized people, but as you get into the higher stratas, it's either just completely selfish, control freak type individuals, or it's the even worse variety of sadistic psychopaths who enjoy suffering, who enjoy pain, who love ugliness. And I've said it many times on the radio, I don't feel like I'm up to this job. And I know why other people don't get involved or stand up against evil because they don't feel like they're up for the job. But we don't have a choice. And we've just got to ask God to direct us and, and, and lead us and guide us and help us to be strong, pure people. And, you know, I'm proud of most of what I've done. But I also know that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm human too. And I'm held up as a leader, not just by supporters, but by people that hate me so that they can try to hurt the movement towards liberty and freedom. I don't mind being attacked. I know that leaders are attacked and hated because I say the things that are hard to say. I say the things that most people are scared to talk about because it's the truth. But it doesn't make me mad. It doesn't hurt me when people lie about what I do and, 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 and demonize me. It doesn't hurt me individually, but it hurts me for others who have just woken up recently or who aren't that intelligent or who aren't that sophisticated, who get led astray. But all I know is I can just do the best job I can and trust in God and stand up against this corruption. But it's all accelerating right now. This whole global system is unfolding and they're accelerating the taxes worldwide and squeezing innocent people and destroying productivity and wealth to make people dependent. It's just, it's just so horrible to see what this system has done and to know that it's just getting started. But that's basically it. It's Halloween night. I'm standing outdoors looking at the stars. I can hear kids going down the street giggling and laughing, you know, dressed up like ghouls and devils, so that when they face real ghouls and devils in human form, 
they won't be able to recognize them because people think evil comes in a Hitler uniform with a mustache or as a bloody-faced zombie and not as a slick politician with an Ivy League education in a $4,000 suit landing on their private jet. They don't know that evil comes in the food they eat laced with chemicals and poisons and bisphenol A. They don't know that, that we're in this huge system of eugenics, this slow creeping scientific dehumanization. And to see how far they've gone with their training of the public to accept corruption and oppression, to see them naked body scanning people and bathing the TSA workers in radiation as they bathe others in it, their baptism of death, to see the TSA announce the next phase of dehumanization as we're incrementally trained, that they're going to touch women's breasts and genitals and men's genitals. This is an act of total submission to them as the enforcers themselves are trained to dehumanize others and dehumanize themselves as we're all basically brought one step deeper into this this crucible. I hope everybody listening to this really counts the cost and makes the decision to choose what side of this fight they're going to be on and I've made the commitment, God's really touched my heart in the last few weeks, to try to not be the angry firebrand, because I get angry when I look at this information, but to try to be calm and focused and loving, and to try to really reach out to people so they can understand what's happening. I mean, here's just one example of the more complex thoughts I have, like we all do, and they're hard to articulate, but I was driving home from the radio show. Sunday night, and I wanted to distract myself this evening, so I tuned over to listen to a radio station carrying the start of Game Four of the uh, World Series between the Giants and the, and the Texas Rangers. And you know, baseball's healthy; it's a better role model for kids than you know these rappers and rock and roll people. But it's that folks invest psychologically in that being their team, that being their tribe when their team and their tribe is their family and is their constitution and their bill of rights. And if our families weren't in trouble and if our constitution and bill of rights weren't in trouble, then it wouldn't be so bad that people are obsessed with the NFL and the NBA and the National Baseball League. It wouldn't be bad. But we have these symbols, the American flag and the Texas flag and the baseball games. And even though we're going into this engineered depression, people think, well, you know, at least we still can go out to the ballpark. And then I was listening to the ads, and it was all uh, you know, sport clips, haircutting place. Come in, and we'll donate part of the proceeds to give phone cards to the troops so they can call their families. I mean, why wouldn't that be provided by the government when you know they spend billions of dollars on a single fighter aircraft? But the point is, they get everybody to psychologically tie themselves into the troops, like they're helping them and they're caring about them. But meanwhile, it's been out for three months that Prudential and others signed deals 11 years ago with the Veterans Affairs and the Pentagon to steal the death benefits of six million former service people from World War II through the current wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. But see, that's seen as unpatriotic. It's seen as rude. Let the government take their money. That's, you know, send the troops a phone card, but let them breathe depleted uranium and get lung cancer and let them have their death benefits that they've paid into, taken when they die, so their widows or widowers don't get it, and you know, let them be shot up with experimental vaccines, and don't talk about Project Shad, the tens of thousands of tests, in many cases, premeditatedly killing our troops right up into the 1990s, and that's just the latest stuff that's been declassified. No, no, it's just patriotic to listen to the baseball game on the radio and go get, you know, your hair cut at a place, and I hear a bunch of businesses doing this, that'll give money uh, for phone cards to the troops. And never mind that the VA announced last year that they want to make troops buy their own insurance. No, no, just don't talk about that. Just, just be a conformist and have this shallow fake patriotism of a baseball game. And 
send the troops a phone card and feel good about yourself. It's like fake charity. It's surface charity. Can you imagine if all these businesses organized and got groups together to buy TV ads exposing that the big insurance companies stole their death benefits? I mean, if they can steal their death benefits, of course they're going to steal your mortgage and sell it over and over again and try to repossess your house even when you're up on the payments. I mean, of course the Pentagon admits there's trillions of dollars missing. Of course the Federal Reserve won't tell Congress where trillions are. I mean, it's just it's just wall-to-wall -wall total corruption. Uh, and, and they're doing it on purpose. You know, they come out on Fox and CNN and say, our government gives fertilizer to the Afghans to grow opium because if we don't, the Taliban will come and help them and take over. When the Taliban is Afghanistan and the government's openly working with Mohammed Karzai's brother, the head opium trafficker, to grow all this stuff. And there's a flood of opium hitting the whole world. And, and they just admit they're growing it. I talk a lot about how they admit now in the Washington Post, the CIA admitted they made fake bin Laden videos. You know, they admit Anwar al awlaki bin Laden's right-hand man, meeting at the Pentagon two months after 9-11. I mean, I've already ranted about all this on the radio. It's just how they're practicing evil and, and lies and disinformation right out in front of everyone. I mean, Governor Ridge admitting they issued fake terror alerts in the, in the 2004 election. Of course Obama staged or his handler staged this latest Yemen printer cartridge garbage. It's just so transparent. And a few years from now, they'll probably tell us that was staged too. People just, oh, that's what they do. But to be patriotic, you, you give money to Blue Santa, you go get in the parade to give poor kids toys. Of course, you know, meanwhile, the CPS is trying to take them from their parents and put them on Ritalin and Prozac and shoot them up with H1N1 flu vaccine, which we were right about again, that brain damages them. But, but, but that doesn't matter. It's, it's all the surface. We, we feel good when we get on the vaccine. We, we feel good as we march into the killing fields of the eugenics slow extermination soft kill program. But I am really going to try to be more focused, more calm. I'm going to be honest with people. A lot of times I start ranting and raving and talking fast because I'll do all these hours of research at night and then the morning and I'll read all these bills and all this legislation and I have all these complex thoughts and understandings and it's, it's kind of like it's leftovers in the refrigerator by the time I get on air. I've already absorbed it. I've already coldly analyzed it and had all these connections and understandings and then I can't most of the time even articulate one-tenth of the full scale of just what I can perceive and it's always worse than what I perceive. The government and media and COINTELPRO grassroots disinformation agents say I exaggerate or they say they say I fear monger but nine times out of the ten when I analyze what I've said it's worse than what I normally talk about because this is an evil system with tens of millions of people aiding this corrupt system and it's always so much more hardcore than we can even try to describe.